Well, hi guys, welcome to the channel. Now today I'm going to be joining some door frames. So what it is, is that we've, because this is an old house, we've got some internal doors that are going to be for a nine inch wall. So I'm having to machine up these, uh, a six inch door frame and a five inch door frame to accommodate a nine inch brick and an inch of dot dab and plaster on each side. So really simple process, all I'm doing is uh, doing a thing what the technique is called biscuit jointing, which is just where you put, say, uh, get this machine, which machines are groove into the, uh, the timber. You put these things called biscuits in. Obviously you have to uh, put glue in there as well, but they fit in there nice and snug like that. Some people just glue when they clamp, but what happens is, is that when you're clamping up, the, thing to, the uh, timber tends to slide, and this just actually gives it a much more positive fix and a mechanical fix, if you like. So it's just a much better way of doing it. Also, it stops it from uh, shrinking and separating. That's just what I'm getting on with today, ready to uh, fit. Okay, so first part of the process with jointing these door frames is to machine the groove ready for to take the biscuit. So the first thing is to mark up. Now, what I'm going to do is just go six inches in from each side. This isn't a required measurement, it's down to personal preference. You can put as many or as few as you want. I always try and try to go at least every life, just over a foot really. So I'm going to go six inches in from each, each way. And we've got 207, so 103 and a half. And half of both, we've got 850, so I'm going to go 425 there. And then 425 there. Before I start, I just want to make sure that the uh, timber lines through perfectly. Mark my first, mark my second. Also, this is a point of reference, put an X both sides just to know, just so you know which end you're working on. So let's move this out of the way, just for now. Get the biscuit jointer. First one done, it's done out of the way. Move on to the second piece. Little tip when I'm doing this, obviously I have my lines here which line up with the centre of my cutter. What I like to do is just move it a couple of mil each side of the line. Now what it does is it just makes the groove slightly longer. So when you've got your biscuits in, just gives you that little bit of extra adjustment to line everything up and just has that bit of freedom just to pull everything in like that. But these are quite accurate, you don't have to, it's just a personal preference at all. So that's all machined up, it's just ready. So next stage is to get the uh, biscuits in, glue up and uh, clamp up. Right, so the next step is we're going to uh, glue all down this edge on both sides, insert the biscuits and get it clamped up, ready to uh, turn this into a 9 inch door frame. So now get a spreader, just make sure you get a nice even cavity along the joint. So some people like to use their finger. I like to keep myself clean and just use a piece of timber. And now that's nice and evenly coated. There's one. There's two. There's three, four, and finally five. As you can see, I've just tapped it together, just going to bring uh, everything in line now. So, just get that sort of out of the way now. Now the key thing when you're doing this is not to panic when you, after you get the uh, get yourself glued up. You've got about an hour, hour or so before the glue starts to cure, so you've got plenty of time to set yourself up. So the key thing is never to sort of start rushing. Right, 
right, so uh, I've got all my clamps laid out and I'm ready to start clamping up. Uh, I've got these uh, packers machined up. Now what I'm going to do, they're going to sit in between the timber and the metal clamp. Now the reason why I'm doing this, if I have to clamp it up under tension, it's going to leave the pressure marks in the timber. I'm not going to do that, otherwise we're going to have to uh, start planing them down. So it's just going to protect the timber, which is uh, a bit of an essential. So if you're saving spending four minutes cutting these packers, it's going to send you a, save you a lot of time potentially having to repair the damage. So just another little tip. I've got, got my packers in, now I'm just going to start tightening up and that's always the way to know that you've clamped up the right amount and you've got just the right amount of glue because when you clamp up you want to see a nice line of glue splurging now that means that there's no gaps in it and there's no bits that you've missed with the glue so every single part of this timber on the joint is now glued together. Is to clean up. Just hook it the water, cloth. Always make sure it's clean water though, because you don't want it staining the timber. So the last thing to check that everything's just lining through nice, which it is. There's a little step here in between the two biscuits, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because all I'm going to do is get my hammer. I've brought it into line nicely. I'm just going to check that. Lined up nice. There and there. So that is all glued up, ready to go. Curing time on this is probably three to four hours, I think, but I'm probably going to leave it overnight. Absolutely guaranteed that it's not going to go anywhere. So, yeah, we've got the first set of uprights all clamped up with the sash clamps, as you saw earlier. They're going off, but unfortunately I've only got five clamps and I've got another upright and a header to glue up. So what I've had to do is just quickly come up with uh, a homemade clamping system. If you're a keen DIY, you can't always justify spending the money on sash clamps and stuff like that. So this is just a way of doing it out of uh, scrap material and just saving yourself a few quid. So anyway, what I've done is I've uh, cut five lengths of material at a four by two. Like I say, these are all just off cuts that we've had left over. 500 mil long. And then I've cut 10 blocks and uh, just quickly pre-drilled them. 70 mil screw. So that's the first stage. Then what I've done is I've uh, cut this block of wood to the width of my material and added on say a quarter of an inch. So that'll then locate there. Take that out and that's your first one made. Now I'm going to repeat the process four other times and then I'm going to show you how they work. So I've got my five clamps made so I'm going to glue up and biscuit it like I did before and then I'll show you how these work. Got the clamps all in position, just got these uh, wedges set off machined up so all you do just start Tapping them into place and just once again, same principle as when you can clamping up with a sash clamp. Just keep going until the glue splurges out and you've got plenty of pressure on it, so. As you see, the way it works is by uh, just hammering the wedges in to make a nice tight joint. Just give it another quick clean up. Flip her over. 
And as you can see, the works the glue's done its job. <laughs> so one last thing to check, we'll just make sure this is all nice and flat against the clamp. So Just check, make sure the joints are all nice and level. A little bit of a discrepancy just here, so just sort that out quickly. So, that's all clamped up, ready to go. Stick it in the corner, let the glue go off, and uh, just for header to do now, and it will just be repeating the same process. But like I say, just a really, really quick, inexpensive way to clamp up a couple of bits of material, whether you're in this situation. I mean, they can be as long or as short as you need. So, loads of flexibility. And like I say, you can just make it out of any old bit of scrap you got left lying around. So, nice wood.